Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about the additive engine in Alchemy and to do so I've made uh, this sound. <laughs> Um, so nothing much is going on inside the piano roll there, only two notes, uh, one and a six. And also nothing much is going on, on on this main interface here. We're only using one source, we're not using filters, um, we're using just one reverb. Um, but still, that there's, it sounds kind of interesting. So um, what's happening here is that I'm, I'm modulating or I'm, I'm um, using an envelope to control the pitch of the upper harmonics in the sound, so not the fundamental. So um, before we get into that, I'll just mute um, all other effects here. So we have an MSEG on the symmetry there. We use this uh, magnet, which is like a sort of a detuning effect. And we have some vibrato. Um, for the wave, I've, I use a triangle wave, but I can switch it to a sine. And this, this is sort of the core of the sound. <laughs> So everything that's happening in this sound is happening here inside the additive engine. And I want to demonstrate this with a new patch. So let's quickly jump into a new alchemy, completely fresh. Um, right now it's we have two notes here, a one and a five. And um, if I play this, we just hear the default sound wave. Um, but as soon as I go into edit mode and click inside here, it will um, disable this um, VA synthesis and will enable the additive synthesis. So now if I go into edit mode again, we can see our one harmonic, which sounds like a sine wave because it is a sine wave. Um, so what happens here is that at the top we see our harmonics and we only see the odd numbers, but um, they're all there. Um, if we were to only draw those odd harmonics, we would get a saw, uh, square wave, for example, or at least a hollow sounding wave. Um, but the cool thing, and something that I haven't seen in any other graphical synth, is that not only do we have control over the volume of these partials, we also have control over the tuning, um, which is what I used. So let's just start by adding our first harmonic. We need to select it here. So this window, um, I, I won't have the time to go into every detail, but um, I will give you a few hints along the way. One of those tips is that um, this overall button here, if it's clicked on, we see all of the harmonics at the same time and we see sort of an average of their amplitudes and their envelopes. So since we're going to um, alter individual harmonics, we want to click this off and then everything you select in this upper window is shown in this lower window. So right now I have this first partial selected, I can see the envelope of that. If I click two, we can see that it doesn't have an envelope yet and, and, and so on for three and all the other partials. So that, ha that happens the same with the tuning window. So we see a different envelope as soon as we switch to the tuning um, and they will be all be centered because that's um, you can go up and down in terms of in terms of pitch. So let's first just draw the volume envelope of our first harmonic. Um, I'll just take this last dot here and I'll move that to let's say uh, three. Now I can drag this bar in to resize that. It's sort of an odd system, but uh, you'll get used to it. And then I'll set my loop markers, which are those yellow guys there. I can uh, click to create a point and I can right click to delete a point. So now I have my volume envelope. In case you're wondering why we're not seeing that partial anymore, that's because I have this last dot selected. You can see it's bright white. If I select another one, we can see the volume at that point of that specific partial. All right, and there I accidentally created a new dot, which is something that you have to be careful about. So now um, I'll, I'll leave this like it is, and then I'll go to my uh, second harmonic, and I draw an envelope for that as well. So I'll set this all the way to the end there. So it's important here that you keep that, that you select that second bar. Um, so I'll draw a new volume shape. Thank you. 
So now you can sort of hear this higher tone on top of that fundamental. Um, this is going to be, if you know your overtone series, this is going to be an octave higher. So it's this frequency double. So it's um, the first harmonic is your fundamental, then or actually the zero is the fundamental, and um, although here they say one. And then the next one is going to be an octave. Then after that you get a fifth, then you get another octave. That's because the frequencies um, keep stacking up. So um, hypothetically, if one was a hundred, then two would be two hundred, three would be three hundred, four hundred, etc. So that's why it um, it doubles at two and four and eight and sixteen, etc. So um, now the really interesting thing here is this tuning. So for that, I'm, I'm just going to leave this these first two harmonics there. Um, I'll add a, a third harmonic here, which is the fifth, and I'll make a nice envelope for that. Something like this. But then I'm going to focus on this fourth partial, which is quite high. It's two octaves higher than, than that fundamental. And I'm first going to, again, make a volume envelope. But then I'm also going to make a pitch envelope. So that pitch will only act on this harmonic and not on the rest of the sound, which is super cool. So here we see our pitch um, our pitch envelope. It goes up to six semitones. We can snap the pitch like that. Um, let's make sort of a glide up here. And let's, uh, let's actually modulate it up six semitones. And let's see what that sounds like. Now six is not ideal because it's a tritone. Um, in other words, it's not in our scale. So let's try uh, five semitones, which is a fourth, a perfect fourth. I think in my other sound, uh, what I did was that I went to a minor third and then I glided down to a second, like that. So um, now that we've done this, and this this is where you want to spend all of your time, um, it's, it's very time intensive to make this, so uh, I want to keep this tutorial sort of short, so I'm going to leave it at that, um, but that is where you can make the interesting melodies. Now there are some, um, some things to make that a little bit easier. Um, first here we have our speed control, which scales the overall speed of all these envelopes, so if I set this to 50%, it's twice slower. Um, and we have our position, which is where that line is. So we could set the speed to 0% and control the position manually. However, in that case, we won't have control over the individual partial. This is for, this is for everything, right? So um, I could set up an MSCG to control. In our case, it's not a big problem because um, we use a similar timing for each of these, um, each of these partials. So I'll set this to four bars. that okay so now um, another thing that we can do to make it a little bit nicer is we can switch to a different wave now um, keep in mind that if we use sine waves then additive synthesis is really additive synthesis if we draw one partial we get one partial but that's because sine waves are the only wave that have only one harmonic all the other waves they have more harmonics so um, by drawing a specific harmonic um, you don't only get that harmonic, you get other stuff as well, which becomes a problem if you're using a lot of a lot of partials because then it can sound very dissonant. For us, we're only using four, and um, we're mostly using those those partials that are um, actually the same frequency as our fundamental. So it's not a big problem, um, and we can actually see what this what this sounds like uh, with a saw wave. <laughs> 
So it becomes a lot messier. Um, we can try a triangle. It's sort of, it's, it's still a lot cleaner, but it has a little bit more color. Um, all right, and then um, we can use these effects here. So um, one of them is harmonic, which sets the amount of the fundamental, the amount of the octaves. So those are those uh, two, four, eight, sixteen, etc. And the amount of odd, even harmonics and fifths. If I set, for example, the fundamental to one hundred percent, we'll only hear that one. So in that case, we won't hear our pitch anymore because that's that wasn't the fundamental. And then we can use some other effects here. Um, I'll use beating. Now this beating one, um, this knob here is a little bit counterintuitive. It's just two, four, six, eight, blah, blah, blah. Um, this means the interval at which is going to beat the frequencies. And frequency beating is when two frequencies are very close together, but just not <laughs> quite there yet. Um, and this gives that that sort of, um, yeah, it's really a beating sound. Like you, you can hear sort of a wobble in terms of pitch. Um, you can actually hear it. Um, this one, the higher you set it, the less effect it will have because it will skip um, every night. It will do like every ninth or every eighth partial. For these effects, um, it often helps to use very, very small amounts. And then we can um, modulate that symmetry control, which is the duty cycle of the wave. And we'll do that with a, um, let's do a new MSEG. And I'll choose a preset to save some time. Uh, it's very extreme. Um, something like that. And I'll stretch that and make it twice as long. So it's a little bit slower. And then finally, let's send this to uh, filter one. It already does. And then let's set, send filter one to effect A. I'm going to um, switch that off. And then I'll use um, a little bit of distortion, uh, or actually a wave shape, because that can very nicely um, sort of emphasize those higher harmonics. Then after that, um, I'll use a convolution reverb to give it some nice weird drone tone in the background. These are uh, pitched convolutions. Um, so that might be very out of tune, but often we're good. Now, if you really want to tune this, you can do so using this um, size, or you can like the approach for that would be get your tuner like that and see what what this pitch is doing um, you would give it a static tone and then you use this size to resize the audio file and thereby, thereby change the pitch um, for now i'll just choose one of the drum transformers which are also nice and then after that i'll use a little bit of a delay and a little bit of a reverb and i'll set my delay to uh, dotted quarter notes and Let's see eight notes and then I'll give it some crossover which allows the delay of the left side to go to the right side and now you can tweak all these settings here to get different melodies like the modulation depth or the position of this position control that actually sounds really nice um,
Um, I hope you got some nice ideas out of that and I'll see you guys in the next video. The Pyramind Mentorship Network connects you to experienced professionals for truly customized private training in music production, sound design, music business, and more. Use our scheduling tool to select the type of training you want, pick your mentor, find a day and time that works best for you, then book your session. Your appointment will be confirmed instantly. Study only what you want, progress at your own pace, pay as you go, and do it all from the comfort of your home or studio. Our global network of industry experts are here to help you. Visit pyramind.com mentorship to get started.